Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. It is the Monday Mayhem Wrap-Up. I am Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And I'm ready to talk wrestling with some good friends. Or maybe just Legos. Or maybe just Google+. Plus, or maybe just that Jumanji movie I saw last night or, instead or of the maybe pay-per-view. maybe Disney+. Plus. Or maybe Disney+. Plus. I no had one's a, talking about Google+, Plus anymore. I had so a very you, good discussion. Are you going to add me to your circle? What's that? you going to add me to your circle? Your circle? Did I say Google+. Plus? You, you did, plus. and I won- and I immediately wondered what year this was. I- <laughs> to be I- fair, I watched Raw and immediately wondered what year this was. You know what I did? You know, it's uh, I don't want the decade to like to go, <laughs> so I'm just re- revisiting it, and it's like my own my own like decade dementia. Um, so you just miss having Google Glass on your face. I you? do. I do. The final update rolled out on that. I, I mean, I sold it several years ago for an iPad three. Uh, and a pebble, which are all are obsolete by now as well. Sorg, remember when we went to Google? Yeah, no, I was reminiscing. I shared some of those pictures when you and I went to Google to pick up the glass. Mm-hmm. You're my. And, and, and we pretended that um, we were scanning everyone's power levels. Yeah, yeah. And then suddenly realizing, oh, you can take some really bad photos of this right away. Yeah, yeah. Pretty quick when we were like testing that thing in Times Square at night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those were the days. Hey, Mad Mike's with us up in Beacon, New York. He's the only Mayhammer with a future endeavored letter from the WWE. At least one. Well, yeah. Hey, hey, stop that. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, that's you, now that you're paranoid after I made that comment last week, which is like, fuck. Eh, let's just go with this. What uh, the fuck? Also from California, where they don't believe in snow. Alex Cars is joining us of OccupyProWrestling.com. I remember snow. <laughs> I used I used to live up in the mountains for about a year. I remember snow. You may remember snow, but I was born in snow. You may have been born to the snowstorm, but I have lived through it, was molded by it, shaped by it. Thank you. Thank you for completing that quote for me. Yeah, but yeah, anyways, yeah. this is the show where we barely talk wrestling on our pro wrestling uh, Facebook. Uh, <laughs> wherever you're catching it. Uh, but <laughs> what's happening over there? Sorry. Oh, wait, wow. wait, 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 wait. Mad Mike, are Hold you... On. Wait, this, have... is this a Lego update? No, this is better than a Lego update. Okay. Uh, because because Matt Collins is talking about it officially in the chat room. Oh. Uh, Matt Collins is talking about our Mayhem Fantasy Football League. Oh. Which is just going into the championship semifinals next week. I haven't heard much of this. I, th- I thought there'd be more trash talking. I catch. Um, it's it's the trash talk has been on Twitter a little bit. Okay, is this just happening on Sun? It's happening on Sundays when I'm busy doing other things. Pretty much. Okay. Um, actually, I just beat the shit out of Bobby FJ Town. So what? Ha! <laughs> uh, Drew Brees just got me four touchdowns and and allowed me to beat um Bobby FJ Town. But I wanted to reveal, um, I got a prize. Okay. For the winner of Mayhem Fantasy Football. And the winner of Mayhem Fantasy Football will get to hold this for a whole year. Mm. Until such time, they will have to send it to the winner of next year's Mayhem Fantasy Football. Is that cash on delivery? Sorg, are you ready? Are you ready to see what this is? Mm-hmm. Do you, do you have the camera on me, Sorg? It's on you. It's been on you this whole time. Okay. Sorg? This. Whoa! This is the prize. It's the 24-7 European Championship. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's... That is great. It's fantastic. Um, Right now, it looks like the preeminent favorite is Chad the Shad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Brandon's um, just saying it. Uh, it looks like just a gift to Chad. <laughs> well, uh, no, but and keep in mind, it's only for this year. Yes. Um, because I because this title has blanks on the sides. <gasps> no. Yeah, yeah. We're going to write down everyone's names. 
I'm going to force him. Win this. If he does, I'm going to make him wear it to his video shoots. At, Hell yes. At absolutely. Wrestling. Absolutely. Why is that videographer wearing a 24-7 championship? Can I pin him? No, no, because he he can only win it in fantasy football. Yeah, yeah. So um, there has to be a little like yeah. asterisk on the inside of the belt. Only can be won via. No, I'm gonna write twenty four seven fantasy football champion. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> but because I literally just got this in the mail, it still it still smells like warehouse. Mm. So that that's you know that's sweet warehouse smell. Mm. But um, yeah. So the winner of fantasy football this year will be mailed this. Mm-hmm. And then whoever wins fantasy football next year will have to mail it to the winner as an act of passing the torch. So if you don't want to pay for postage, win again. Exactly. See, you have more incentive. Mm-hmm. You have more incentive. I like it. And it it it's actually very light, so the shipping should not be much at all. No, no. I mean, it's more yeah. of a bulk thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be very exciting. Very Fantastic. exciting stuff, Sork. I'm so glad that this thing. I, I I'm glad that there's something happening within the mayhem reverse, um, within that mayhem you're not involved that in, I'm that absolutely don't... not involved <laughs> in at all. Well, uh, because we had a few teams that were kind of inactive this year. Okay. Um, I'm going to be getting rid of those teams. Okay. So now that people know there's a prize on the line. Yes. And quite uh, a prestigious prize as as well. We will be doing an open casting call for next season. Wait, casting call? Yes. Like, will there be interviews or like? They how... just need to. They just need to promise to change their rosters every week. Oh, that. Oh, oh, that old thing. Yeah, that old thing. That old thing. Or at least pretend to <laughs> move somebody around. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just. But you know. uh, yeah. Oh, was this a bye week for the Bills? Whoops. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> like if Missy wants to get in on it. She is more than welcome. There's a, did I tell you about this? Is since we're on, who cares about wrestling right now? Uh, did I tell you about the encounter that we had at the at Thanksgiving when uh, we're at uh, some of my folks' place and uh, uh, my folks, my family, not my parents' place. Uh, mom was there, but uh, and 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 one of my cousins was going on because the Bills are, Bills are playing the Cowboys, as you may recall, Mike. You know what? Go fuck yourself. Uh, anyways, they kept going on about how <laughs> how crazy Bills fans were there. And I just go look over at Missy. I'm like, huh, isn't that interesting? <laughs> right? Like, there's a lot of, um, you know, Bills fans going through tables poorly. Mm-hmm. You know, things like that. And yep. they said, like, yeah. like when the, One of them said one comment of... Um, um, yeah, like Bill fans are going crazy doing like, you know, doing crazy stuff in front of the, in, in, before the, the games and, and lighting themselves on fire and stuff. And I'm like lighting themselves on fire. Mm-hmm. So every time that I see the bills playing and they're doing good, I say, I ask Missy, are you going to light yourself on fire? That's fair. That's yes. a fair question to ask. Anyways, 10 pounds of foam says, Mac yes, Collins. the 10 pounds of foam that I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, um, it was a hell of a weekend of indie wrestling, Mike. I I we I am in the process of editing four shows Excellent. from this weekend. <laughs> uh, of course, um, and uh, like three anniversary shows. Uh, Fight Society had their final round uh, slash PWX 25th anniversary show on Friday. We had our first year anniversary of Prospect Pro Wrestling, which I'm editing now. And we had the third year uh, anniversary of Rise Wrestling with a Y, which uh, I will be at, is on deck after uh, Prospect. I'll probably get started on that tomorrow. Uh, so plus Conquest Pro, uh, I'm sorry, Pro Wrestling Conquest. I keep screwing that up um, down in Charleston, West Virginia, where Mike, mm-hmm. I didn't realize there was a cage match when I showed up. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> We that's like, not that's not great communication there. I walk your, uh... I walk in and I'm just like, why is there a cage over there? Oh, <laughs> so mm. it was it was kind of an interesting experience there. But no, Sorry, were you in the cage? I was not in the cage. No, I I was not in the cage. I'm like, I don't know what these guys are going to do. I'm not getting in the cage. Okay. Um, I did. Well, Gory was in the cage. Oh, so you definitely didn't want to get no, there. no, not at all. Uh, so it, no, it was always it was a good show with them. Um, we we uh, this is our second go with them. They were in a new venue down there in Charleston, West Virginia, and uh, um, there was a goat. There was a, a foam goat, Bobby Junior. A foam. fun goat? No, a foam, a f- like a like a stuffed goat, like a, like that hung out with me at ringside. 
Yes. Sork? I, th this is West Virginia, this right? This is the company that had the hardcore match where they brought everything out in a canoe. But this is West Virginia, this right? This is West Virginia. Charleston. Are you sure that goat was not a valet? Oh, you know what? I bet you Bobby Jr. was a valet. Um, <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That then. is the Lana of West Virginia. Ah, oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Jock Sampson was on the show. Uh, Facade was on the show. At Ace Austin, the, uh, the uh, X Division champion uh, was there as well. Uh, Trey Lamar, who's been doing some really cool things in Cleveland and here in Pittsburgh with Rise. Um, so, yeah, really good show. They, they always have a, a really solid talent there. And uh, looking forward to get that together and get that out there for those guys, too. So um, I, uh, Joe, Joe Nebraska will be presi presiding over commentary, but he was busy with somebody named Ring of Fawner this weekend. I heard oh, they I, I, I think I they did some things. I don't know them. Mm. But uh, anyways, also sad to see that friend of the show, Shane Taylor, has lost the Ring of Honor World Television Championship. That's a shame. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I feel so. I feel sorry for the poor guy who took it from him because they're he, he's he's gonna go after it again. Dragon Lee? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> poor Dragon Lee. Poor Dragon Lee. <laughs> poor Dragon Lee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> oh, oh I saw John Fun again. Excellent. Yeah, he was there. He was um he was uh, uh doing some some tweeting. And uh, contri contributions on the Twitters, so okay, some good stuff. Uh, Alex, what's going on? What's good in your wrestling world? You're he's got, muted, sir. He's got to unmute. He's got a new studio set up. If you don't see, yeah. That. So it's funny you're talking about all the indie wrestling you attended this this weekend, and I was about to say, yeah, it's that time of the year for anniversary shows. Mm-hmm. But uh, and I got an I, and there's like a 10 year anniversary of RWA for their first show, it, like the second <laughs> weekend of of January. So it's just like, huh? See, okay. See, I I remember that because that just made it easy for me to keep track when I used to do the DVD covers. There you go. Uh, yeah. Time. No. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Here's an anniversary show. Here's an it's first show of the year. Anniversary. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, and it's funny because we were discussing off air like right before you called me. For me, it's all about. Uh, that that fun hobby I call e wrestling, which mm -hmm. I've discussed on on the show before. <laughs> I still think we need to do one. I, I don't I don't have the time to do it, but God, I want to do Oop. it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, funny enough, I have I I so so I just came off the back of a four day e fetting pay per view spectacular. Oh boy! Wow! <laughs> and I'm coming up on another pay per view spectacular for take, another Efed. Take that! So take that two day Wrestle Kingdom binge that's going to happen next month. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So this past weekend, uh, so uh, I've told you guys I've been a part of this goofy hobby called Efedding for a good twelve years now, and there's two in particular that I'm uh, that I'm involved with at the moment. Uh, one of them is EWC. Uh, which you can find at ewc 4 live That's number four life dot com. So they'll redirect you to a pro board. I mean, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, so this past weekend we had Russell Fest, uh, not to be confused with the old WWF uh, video game. Uh, we had Russell Fest seventeen. Uh, the Fed's been open since nineteen ninety seven, and we've had it. And this past weekend was our seventeenth Russell Fest, and for the very first time we did a four day actual like wrestling festival and for three of those four days we actually posted results match by segment by match in real time so like every half hour or so we posted a match or a segment depending on what was next up on the docket it was great in and, real uh, time that in real time oh, boy and we included tweets from people that were involved in real time as part of our results <laughs> as we went and it was a lot of fun I I've done e fetting before. That sounds yeah. This is like yeah. And this was the first time that I've been a part of anything like that in any kind of capacity. So we had that going on, and it's a lot that I I don't know how much time y'all want to have me dive into this. I'll go over the main. Yeah, give me give, give us the gloss over. 
Do you guys make your own characters, or do or is oh yeah, this of, is oh yeah. This okay, is I wasn't sure because I know some feds use like, like they they can use established wrestlers, but yeah, there's some backstory. there's some that are based around kind of real wrestlers. There's some that are all creative, like they're all original characters. There's some that are a mix. This one's all original characters. I should just join it and not tell you and see if you can figure out who I am. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, maybe so, I already I have. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I have not. I That's have not. all. No. Um. <laughs> yeah. So the broad, so the broad strokes of of uh, WrestleFest this past weekend, we had every championship on the line across the four brands that we have in the Fed. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have, yeah. So we have four different brands with four different shows. Uh, I actually run one run one of those myself. I run Monday Night Brawl as a GM, and then we have. Uh, Rampage on Friday nights. We have FSW, which is actually it's a developmental brand, kind <laughs> of in line with NXT. That's every Wednesday night for the shows. And then we have we have Prime, which is a, a micro fed, which like uh, role plays for that are like a 500 word limit, so it's not nearly as much writing. You get to do two role plays for a match or whatever, and then they do that every uh, Sunday. Yeah, every Sunday. Well, every other set. The shows are usually every other week, basically, and so all four of those brands were represented in in this uh, big pay per view spectacular that we had. Um, every title was on the line, and of all the titles that were on the line, I think off the top of my head, all but three of the championships changed hands. Uh, so the, the the writing for this, the the role playing, the writing for. Uh, leading up into this was very competitive and so we ended up with a lot of title changes into including our top championship the undisputed championship which i actually had a hand in redesigning myself kind of as a chance to uh represent all like i said represent all four brands of the fed but also uh we retired the old design of the championship in honor of a handler who had passed away earlier this year uh, who was pretty synonymous with the title. So we retired that. The in-character side of it is that that championship is going to be put in with uh, kind of his Hall of Fame uh, induction stuff within it's, like the, the fictional. Is it someone who passed away in real life or in your... Yeah, no, no. This is someone, uh, the okay. handler passed away in real life okay. and we, we wrote within the within the reality of the the Fed that the actual like that the character passed okay. because okay. the handler passed. Yes. Okay. Yeah, just to I clarify, was, this is someone. No, I was I was yeah. genuinely curious because in my efed, God, 10, 12 years ago, something like that, mm-hmm. we actually did a story where there was a botched move, mm-hmm. and one of my characters accidentally killed someone in the ring. Yeah, I think we, no, we ha- I, I, I've I, seen I, that I, kind I, of stuff. Was, but yeah, no, this was yeah, this is real mess. Yeah. Yeah, was, so I was in a dark place, Sorg. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So with this situation, it's because the handler passed away. So we've kind of honored the character of that the character's name being Ashton Drake. So uh, he's a Hall of Famer with an EWC. I believe he was just inducted last year as well. And then, um, yeah, in fact, he he had been inducted before. Like he was yeah, inducted yeah. late last year. He passed earlier this year. So That's in honor of his name too. Yeah, so in honor of the handler and the character, uh, we retired the old championship design with this new one that I had a hand in redesigning. And we also did it something called the Drake Memorial Cup, which was actually the opening show, well, the opening match of the show that we just posted earlier tonight. Uh, we had a fatal four way match with the winner winning uh, kind of a, basically like a trophy of, of, of sorts mm-hmm. for that. Again, also in honor of the character. Like, like uh, the Dusty Tag Team Classic. Kind exactly. Of. Stuff like that. So, you know, so we had that. That was, so we've had those as part of our main things. And again, we had, let's see, tonight, tonight's show had three title matches and all but one. No, t- I'm sorry. Only, only the one changed hand tonight. But like, we've only had two other championships uh, stay with the same people. So a lot of like, this this pay per view, on top of being really crazy and very unique for for e also completely shook up the title scene 
and just in time because basically all the contendership stuff resets after this show is done. So we're looking at very, like, very different title picture going into the next year. So that was Perfect. EWC's WrestleFest. Yeah, right a in. lot of stuff. And I'm telling you, it it was crazy. I did spend a good chunk of each day, like from Friday to yesterday, trying to just kind of make sure everything went up without a hitch. Just since I I, I personally had enough free time to do so. Mm-hmm. But like we have four, like we have four uh, we have four GMs and then uh, President Mac is kind of our main Fed head guy, and so the five of us were all working together throughout this past weekend and tonight, work putting that together. So that was EWC's WrestleFest. That was a lot of fun, very taxing on yeah on everyone involved. But totally you guys worth write it. out like full matches and everything. Um yeah well okay. yeah tonight's show was all was all fully written some matches were summarized it's yeah. kind of a blend do you do commentary on. too yeah 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 okay. yeah sorg i know this this is like foreign to you but i've written matches mm-hmm. <laughs> that shit takes a while so yeah. so so oh, when we talk about that shit takes a while. I'm always concerned when on the show when we like kind of try to act like we can book <clears throat> raw better. You guys literally have tried to book I, raw better. I, I've Sorg, do you want to hear about the two gimmick matches I created personally? Hmm. <laughs> do you want to hear about them? Okay. All right. So the first one I've created um used it many times. It was an annual tradition called Five Floors of Hell. <laughs> oh, okay. It was a match that took place inside of a service elevator. Okay. A match that took place inside of a service elevator. It sounds like a Ninja Turtles the arcade game <clears throat> level. With kinda. With weapons <laughs> strewn about. Okay. It it started with one man in the bottom of the elevator, and he just waits. He can prepare shit if he wants. He can set traps. He can try and blindside someone. But as soon as that first floor dings, the first competitor comes into the match. And the elevator is timed, so it's like five-minute intervals per floor because it's a very slow elevator. If a pinfall happens in that first five minutes, that person is eliminated. But obviously, they're still in the elevator. (laughs) <laughs> and then once the next floor hits if no one's been eliminated then you have three people in there and whoever is left when you get to the fifth floor which is the roof access you have to fight on the roof of the building to get the belt that's hung on a scaffolding is i is rick diamond listening i don't think there's an elevator <laughs> in the diamond box. i don't but yeah so i wrote Just... it one year where a dude hid in the like pulled a John McClane and hit, and was hiding above the elevator shaft, like above the elevator car, and instead of coming in through the door, like came in with a hurricane rana through the top of the elevator, but waited for his turn. Yes, of course, wait for his and turn. And you do because you have to do that. Yeah, yeah, you're not you leaving in the in the match until. Yeah, luckily he just happened to be the first guy in the match. Mm-hmm. Who put that shit? <laughs> See, but... it's. Mike, it's funny you mentioned, you know, coming up with match types. So that's been a big thing of mine throughout the, the 12 years that I've been e-fetting. I like coming up with, with new stuff myself from time to time. I, uh, for w- one of the, one of the matches, uh, for WrestleFest was actually a match type that I kind of tweaked from an existing match type. Uh, w- one of the, ma- so one of the title matches was for the X Division Championship, which in our Fed is more of kind of a, it's kind of a, most, it's more of an extreme hardcore type thing as far as like you know different match stipulations go uh but the match that we did we, this was actually a rematch from an episode of brawl that we had and for this rematch we put it in what i called what i call a weapon x match and essentially a weapon x match is an ultimate x match as featured in impact the more recent ones really the ones with the scaffolding for the mm-hmm that but the idea the, the sort of gimmick with this is that there's weapons were kind of put on the scaffolding as you go hmm. so you know it, it gets it gets kind of weird and crazy but yeah so that so that was one of the the matches i came up with more recently and you, yeah you you come up with some very inventive match types oh yeah well because that. you don't have to worry about like killing anyone 
Exactly. None of these you don't have to worry about like insurance. Yeah, exactly. Like the, the, la- the second match I came up with, our money in the bank concept. Uh huh. Def- you definitely could not do. Oh mm-hmm. man. Um, we called it Excel. Oh boy. Because to go to the top, you have to excel. It's the big hell in a cell with the roof taken off and ultimate X cables. Oh, gee. <laughs> Strung. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. Um, yep. that's, that's something. Um, yeah. And uh, actually, and actually, so talking about match types kind of has me wanting to, to transition to the other e thing I wanted to bring up. Um which is actually because it's related to the t-shirt that I'm wearing. Uh, we have a t-shirt from the other Fed I'm in, which is OSW, which is we are OSW.com. Uh, it's a bit, it's a bit of a different e-fedding experience. Uh, Storylines there. Uh, I would honestly say a little less based in reality. This season in particular is kind of almost more geared towards the Lucha Underground type vibe. Excellent. And so I actually... <laughs> And in the midst of all this, the character that I have is a guy named Kenny Freeman, who's just who really loves social media and is trying to be more of a positive influence, which is kind of a funny thing in, in the atmosphere that we have with the Fed right now. But uh, yeah, so we this this weekend we actually have our final show of the year, our final pay per view called Red Snow. Uh, it's become very much a, a year end tradition for the Fed as well, and we're doing actual we're actually doing a bunch of stuff kind of. Uh, a lot of fun kind of outside of just the show itself kind of gearing up for it but yeah we have some really interesting match types that have been set up from the storylines that have taken place over the last month or so uh so for example the match that i'm in uh that my character kenny freeman's in is against a, a guy named seesaw who's kind of a children's it was kind of like a, a show it, it's a show host kind of almost in the vein of what bray wyatt is now with the firefly funhouse Fly, firefly funhouse hmm um kind of ramped up a lot and so this match sees us inside uh what's essentially being to- uh, coined as the toy box which has something to do with seesaw's gimmick of being a show host of, of a kind of a kid's show host of sorts hmm. again kind of a twist thing in that same vibe as bray wyatt but again ramped up to 11 i would say uh so that's just one of the th- things we have we have a match involved uh we have we have matches that are happening inside what's being called an exploding ring. We have a rooftop floor. <laughs> yeah, we have all sorts of weird looking match types. But if if you were to go into like reading the shows and the storylines happening, you at least can, you can at least see where these matches are are being built up. Mm-hmm. But it's just a general idea of like it's it's a it's a vastly different e-fending experience. Interesting. So that's that's what my like that's what my past couple months have been like has been kind of building up to these things so is there and i'm curious about this and and i don't know i don't know if it applies to the ones in this area but i wonder how many like bookers for promotions came out of e-fitting oh, i could see a few if they, i could see a few yeah like uh, of some sort right like get involved in yeah because i mean p- picture having to deal with all the bullshit of why am I not winning without ever actually seeing that person in real life? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's basically and without, what we fed in. And, with, and without having to actually pay anybody in real life. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All mm-hmm. those commissions mm-hmm. and doctors and yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> but that's awesome. Hey, Alex, thanks for coming on and, and tell us about uh, what's going on in your eFed world. Oh yeah. How how was Raw tonight? Right. I, well, yeah, if, if well. you want to know what Raw is like. Picture like the conversation we just had. Uh huh. Have it go twice as long, mm-hmm. and with no discernible ending to it. Mm-mm. And that was a third of raw. And you get interrupted by a sneak peek to some show I don't care about. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Al- Alex, there was a gauntlet match on tonight. Hey, sword, uh-huh. mm. sword. Quick question: Who won the gauntlet match? I don't remember. Nobody. Okay, I didn't think so. I thought that's ha- what happened. It went an hour. Alex, to hey, determine, remind, to determine you said a number this, one contendership uh, for the U.S. title. So nobody's a, a contendership. Oh, oh nobody's no, a contender oh, no. for the U.S. title. Oh no, there are there is someone. Seth Rollins. 
Just the because US he's title. like, I don't like this. I'm going to challenge Rey Mysterio to a fight. That. So what you're telling me is because Brock Lesnar is out in limbo with the universe, with, excuse me, the WWE championship. See, that's how far behind I am on this. Stuff. Oh, shit. That is the WWE championship, isn't it? It's the WWE championship. I can play that as the universal championship. It's okay. None of it matters. Because he's in limbo with the WWE Championship, Seth Rollins is challenging for the United States Championship. Yeah, he's confused, and he's he's defending the WWE Championship across the universe. I I will give Seth Rollins credit on one thing. It does make sense in the sense that Rey Mysterio gave a pipe to Kevin Owens last week. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it's moronic. Yeah, mm-hmm. and actually, and actually, just to sort of correct you, Sorg, I know you said across the universe, but given 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 the time of year that we're in now, I would actually say he's defi- uh, Brock Lesnar's defending that title across the multiverse. No, no, because br- it would require Brock Lesnar to defend the title. <laughs> it could be that could be. By the way, by the way, the <laughs> latest issue of that uh, uh, Gal- Galaxy Romp Wrestling comic is in your your Slack. By the way. Worth oh, reading. Okay. I haven't read the new one yet. Oh man. Uh, the I think it's Invaders from WrestleTopia. Uh, we've been getting some preview copies of that, and uh, highly recommended to go check that out, wrestling fans. All right, guys. Hey, well, we're gearing up. This is probably gonna be the last one of these wrap ups because do you guys really want to watch a pre tape and talk about it next week? I mean, I know we, we probably already did. You yeah. already did. Oh yeah, I guess we Y'all did. Already yeah, did. I didn't. I didn't realize tonight's was a, was kind of a pre tape. I guess they 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 taped it early and 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 rolled it out. You said that your friend is there. If they... anything, I'd rather do a wrap up after NXT this week. Oh boy, NXT only... is going to be hot fire. Well, that's probably not going to happen. I'm probably not going to see it live actually, <laughs> because well, first of all, it is Christmas week. We're going to have a Christmas or end of the year edition of oh, um of... awesome cast. Oh, look at you! There you go, I'd nice Becky Lynch, Lynch uh... ugly sweater, nice. Yeah, well, I'll I dig it. I dig I'll it. There's there. the rest of it. Oh, there's a snowman on her jacket. That's nice. Yeah. The snowman. Ha! Get it? Get it? Get it? You get it? You get I it? Get it. I got it. Snowman. Um, Becky the snowman. <laughs> but uh, we're going to have the Good Guys Christmas special on uh, Tuesday night, uh, starting at 9 p.m. And we are slated on Wednesday at 7 p.m. to have the STD's Christmas special. Oh, Lord. So you should put on NXT in the background. We probably should. We probably should. We'll see Sorge, how that goes. NXT is going to open with Adam Cole versus Finn Balor. Oh, shit. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> with Rhea Ripley. This, this is going to be good. I, I've had, I haven't had a chance to really uh, hang out with the STDs much uh, th- this year, actually. Did you, did you boop the internet? Since I booped the internet. Well, we were on last year, and I was kind of on a sober run. And, uh, and, uh, 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 so we'll see what happens. Um, let's see the the chat that they uh, put that was put together for us to uh, discuss the show is the 2019 Sorg fucks a homeless man STD annual Christmas mayhem show. Um, sounds like the internet isn't what you're gonna I, be pooping. I this didn't year. know one of them was homeless. No, I didn't know either. I mean, they always recruit, so I don't know. That's oh, true. My I, I'm not even sure. Maybe it's, maybe it's um, fuck. What I can't think of his name. What I can't think of his name? You're thinking uh, Billy. Dennis Gregory. What's that? Dennis Gregory. He's Dennis a bum. Gregory is Dennis oh, Gregory in there. He's a bum. Wow. Okay. Nope. He doesn't have a home. Nope. Moving on. Mad, ah! Mad Mike four eight eight three on the tweets. YouTube.com slash Don't Watch Raw. <laughs> and also, he is a <laughs> manager on our Patreon. He is Alex Cars of OccupyProWrestling.com. Thank you. Catch me, in, you know, at Power Number Two Smarts. Check out EWC4Life.com and WeAreOSW.com. Get your e-fetting experience on. I'm at Sorgatron, where you can find pictures of my Chihuahua in a bag <laughs> from Sunday. Uh, That's not a metaphor. No, it's not a metaphor. It's a Chihuahua in a bag, literally, just completely. Um, and other things going on. Check out all the great Sorgatron Media podcasts, our friends Thrifty Podcast, Bardic Mystery Tours, and, of course, the comic book pitch just recorded tonight with other former pro wrestler and original manager of One Walk and Wild, Chris Maverick of the Fox Podcast. 
um, was on that. That should be launching here probably later this week. Uh, that we're going to have two episodes. Um, and he uh, told me everything that is wrong with the Watchmen movie, which I love. And now I don't. Oh, there's a lot wrong with the Watchmen. <laughs> well, not like the things that I thought were wrong with it. But apparently there were some other things that were like, oh, wow, that is really a problem, I guess, if you like Watchmen. And now I'm not going to be able to watch it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I got through the first episode of Watchmen, the series, and I need to get going. Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. I don't think the wife is into it, so I'm going to roll with it. And my stream has frozen. Perfect. Perfect time to close the show. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.